I love the show. I think that um, there are just so many interesting layers of the story to dig into and explore, and I'm completely hooked. What was it like for you guys reading this? Was it the same way? I mean, did you get hooked on the story when you were reading the script? What what made you want to be a part of telling the story? For me, you know, the thing that I thought stood out the most was that the show is tackling these these very grand philosophical questions that are obviously... Uh, put forth in the novel and talking about society and talking about class and talking about sexuality and but that your guide through all of it is that you're living through the way that those um, things manifest themselves in the day-to-day moment-to-moment emotional experience of the people in these worlds and I thought the way in which each scene was the most emotional messy version of what these people's lives and intimate lives were like was the most was was such a more compelling way to get at that and felt much more human and much more real than uh, something that might be you know more prescriptive or something the look of these lands is very important and if those visuals aren't there it could feel very cheap or like a set as opposed to a real place so what was it too in conversations with the creative team that really sort of reassured you and and really sold you on the vision that they had for this and how they would bring it to life? I think going in, the scope of of what was going to be needed to make this as grand as it needed to be um, was something that they were clearly committed to. And you could see that in what was being built. And for me, I, I, you know, was really existing only in the savage lands. And surprisingly, that took a lot to create to create that apocalyptic yeah. kind of um, world uh, of, of, of the future. I just think it was clear from the get-go that if you're going to do this, you have to do it right. Was it the same for, for you, Alden, especially because, I mean, you get to be in both of these places? Yeah, I thought that the just the aesthetic choices they made and one thing they didn't do is i think they they put the look of the show is believable in both the savage lands and in new london as worlds that people would have created they do yeah. not get so sort of sci-fi with it or or apocalyptic with it that it's that it feels like comic booky or like a genre it feels like in some sense, these worlds are justified by what humans might create for themselves as a utopia. I mean, a lot of New London looks like renderings of kind of forward-thinking eco-shopping malls or whatever that exist now. So um, that, I felt, again, couched it in the humanity of it and kept it in, again, like, a, it is sci-fi, but it's using sci-fi to talk about the world we're in now and reflect that back to us as opposed to create an escape from it. This show really is so cinematic and it's so impressive to see what has been accomplished with it. How did this shoot feel during the production? Did it feel like it was on the level of anything you've done in film? In many respects, yes. The thing that's different to me is that in a film project, it's more director driven. So this is the first series I've really done. Um, Getting, wrapping my head around the staggered version of the power hierarchy or like you know who the boss is who's you know who's setting that tone that's a lot clearer when it's you know um a director you know on a film especially a writer director on a film so um yeah yeah that that was the only aspect that felt kind of different but that said like the directors we had were really strong and kind of the the, the, there was a real intention to make this feel like a film. And I think the cinematography also really speaks to that. I too haven't really, I've never done a series, um, but uh, keeping the look of it, you know, like there were moments that we had in some of those scenes um, that felt like a Swedish film. The lighting was so rich and, and was telling so much of the story along, you know, with with everything else. Alton, does this compare in any way to a shoot for something like Solo? Does the Star Wars universe still feel bigger than anything else you've done? Or is the scope of this pretty on that level? Uh, the scope of this is pretty big. It's not quite Star Wars. Big. Yeah. Star Wars is 
you know, Star Wars really lives in the spectacle of these things, whereas this really lives in the moment to moment kind of person to person of it all. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, it, it feels so different, you know, it, it feels, it felt really different because this really felt essentially like a drama and a love story. And, you know, there's, there's a great sense of humor to it and a sense of satire, but it's really grounded. Whereas the fun of Star Wars and the enjoyment of it is that it's a completely different world that people act a little bit like, you know, in this fun way that's somewhat camp and somewhat stylized. So, um, you know, yeah, yeah, this felt, this didn't feel maybe having come off Star Wars, it didn't feel like a sci-fi thing at all in a way. I really loved Solo and, and the cast of that. I thought that was such a fun movie and it's, it's cool to see this as, a follow-up to that. And, and are you still hoping that you might get to reprise solo at some point? We'll see. I don't know. You know, they're, they're figuring out what star Wars looks like in our world today. Um, and, uh, you know, in all ways with the media landscape, everything's so different, uh, with the streaming services and everything. So we'll see what comes of it. I think what's exciting is that we're living in a time where there's a lot of out of the box, uh, thinking around what this yeah. might be. So we'll see. The, the mother-son relationship between your characters really is crucial to this story and getting the audience to want to follow their journey. When did you guys first meet and what helped you in establishing that relationship? Well, we met in Wales. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, was it Wales or in London? Maybe, but anyway, it was, it was over on the uh, other side of the world. Um, at the root of it, it's it's a you know it's a mother that wants the best for her son, uh, what she believes is the best. Um, but you know, there's an interesting immediate difference between their two worlds, which is um, Linda's understanding of sexuality comes from New London, and which is obviously it's more free. There is no monogamy. It's a social body. Um, and I think that spills over into her behavior towards her son. Um, that would be in some ways a bit unnatural for what we consider to be a mother son relationship. Your character also has a very distinct look that's different from how we're used to seeing you. So when it came to exploring the character, how did that help you in finding her? And what is what is the real fun in getting lost in the character in that way? Well, you know, that someone who's never went from never experiencing pain to being abandoned and left um, to have a child um, and I think the look was, you know, also remembering that people in New London don't age, they don't fall apart. And everything about what her life had, has become is survival. Um, and the look was something actually that, um, you know, the creative team really uh, wanted to, you know, to try and um, to really take it away um, and it be somewhat unexpected. But it's really, I really, you know, she's really broken, this, um, you know, woman, but yet still trying to keep some semblance of attractiveness. It's such an interesting concept and, and the themes of, of this world because it seems that forcing people to participate in pleasure seems to somewhat take the pleasure away from it all. Do you guys both personally feel like happiness comes more from a balance of things rather than overindulging in any one thing like these characters seem to kind of try to do? I mean, I, I think that, first of all, happiness can only come from within you, number one, yeah. you know, and, um, and I think that in this, you know, dystopian world where, um, you know, I think you're a hundred percent right that any, like the, the, to be, to, to be, um, it's like almost like by rote, 
that the social body's ac actions are, you know, no different than I'm getting up and having breakfast. Um, and I can't, I think that it, it takes away in a sense, or I could see that it could take away the magic. Um, but like anything, if it's the only thing you know, then it's the only thing you know. Yeah. I mean, only through Alden's character do we get to really live what it might be for our experience to be stepping into it um, and, and learning a new way of, of, of existing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'd also say that like the, the pressure for happiness or for that there's certain feelings that are okay and there's certain feelings that aren't, or there's certain feelings that are good and certain feelings that aren't. And again, this is like, this is using sci-fi to talk about our world. So a, a massive ignorance around uh, fulfillment or happiness needing to look a certain way or have a certain quality to it. And, um, and that bad feelings are bad to have. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of wisdom in Huxley uh, about that and about the trap of that uh, when you're uh, disowning feelings that come up in you, things you might have, fear, anxiety, pain, grief, anger. If those things are being buried, the, the happiness you're running to isn't quite uh, on, a, on a real foundation. What do you think would most surprise people about what it takes to pull off a show like this? I think the orgy scenes. Uh, <laughs> you know, these people who were doing those scenes were such enormous troopers. And, um, you know, we were shooting at three in the morning in the middle of a Welsh forest. And there's <laughs> in a mud pit in the middle of that forest waiting for hours and being given lunches in little boxes and whatever. And they just had a great, uh, great attitude about it and had a great sense of humor about it. And that was uh, very surreal to uh, get used to. It's a whole new suffering for your art. <laughs> More on their part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was, I didn't get to see any of that, but I was in watching it too. Like you, Christina, I like, I the, just, even the choreography of the, of the movements of it. Yeah. Like, I, like even all of that, I can't imagine what, what oh. that must have taken. Yeah. Incredibly. Like the orchestration of all of that was really, was really phenomenal. And to make sure everyone's comfortable and all of yeah. that. It, was a, it actually, uh, again, it actually looks really beautiful. Were there aspects of these characters for you that you particularly enjoyed getting to explore because they were things that you had never had the chance to play before? Yeah, there's something, in, I mean, there was definitely things like stepping into Linda, you know, there, when someone is as she is in the beginning, which is fairly unconscious, it's very interesting kind of the level of freedom in one hand that exists in their irresponsibility, um, in their, um, I don't know, that she, uh, and just going to the, uh, you know, how out of control she actually really was, was really, um, I don't know if I've never done that, but it was certainly an interesting part of the arc of somebody who wakes up to seizing yeah what she sees is the moment she's, that she's been waiting for. There's a kind of um, jaded mischief uh, thing. There's a kind of hostility and fun. Um, there's a term uh, from this book that's, oh, I'm gonna fuck it up, but it was uh, dark pleasure of soured romanticism. Um, and there was an element of that, whereas in a lot of other roles that I've played, I was playing, you know, how I felt for a long time, deeply idealistic and romantic. And there's, there's still that in here, but it has, uh, some other edges to it that were really fun. Well, thank you both for talking to me. I'm very impressed with the show. I can't wait to see how it all plays out.